Hi, I'm Mark Bartlett. Today you join me and we're at Linear Fisheries on St John's Lake, uh, Mega Lake. We're just going to have a look at a few little bits and pieces, all to do with the spawn and how to get the best out of them and how I use them accordingly. So tip number one is obviously to do with the uh, spawn float. Now, a lot of fisheries around the UK now are making this an actual rule. And that's simply so tackle isn't discarded in the fishery and they can get the spawns out if they're drifting around if anybody cracks off. Not only that, yourself, if you crack off yourself, you know, you don't want to be buying these for fun. So you can go around on the end of the wind, get your spawn back, no problem. But obviously with the nature of these big gravel pits, you can be fishing at long range at times. So sometimes with the big winds and stuff, you feel like it's hindering you a little bit with the float on the back standard, you know, that's fine for 90% of your fishing. I simply just cut mine in half lengthways and just clip it under the arms inside the spawn. Works exactly the same. The float is only to give it the buoyancy so it can be get, taken out of the lake in the event of a crack off. So it works exactly the same, just a little bit more aerodynamic for the longer range fishing. Tip number two is just getting yourself set up nice for it. You know, these lakes, they've got natural banks and yeah, all right, you know, you, you could stack a few buckets up. You're probably going to be hard work on the sloping ground. Not only that, I like to spot from in the water from next to where I've got my rods. Just the simple reason I have my rods in the water around these sort of lakes because you've got a shallow margin, swans are about, you can dip your tips out the way of the weed and out the way of the swans. Um, it just makes life easy, but I like to be as accurate as I can. So I stand in exactly the same position as where I cast my rods from. Um, and to do that, just a nice little bucket stand makes life easy. It's got a little holder for my rod as well. And you just get a real nice rhythm. So, you know, like when you're aiming towards your marker that you're gonna cast towards, you're not getting disorientated, moving around, sort of, you could end up a yard or two out of the way, aiming a little bit left or right. And I, I just get that from like my match fishing, just being as accurate as I can all the time and getting in that really nice fluent rhythm and it just works a lot better. It certainly works, you know, all right for me. So um, yeah, just get yourself set up nice and, and you'll be well away, you'll be a lot more accurate. Tip number three is choose the right spawn. And it, it may sound a little bit daft and a little bit simple uh, and obvious to some people, but Really take your time and just think about what spawn you're going to use for what situation. You know, there's three sizes. You've got the mini, which is perfect for small water fishing in the winter. You just want to put a little spawn of maggots out over the top, maybe a little handful of like eight mils. Um, or on the other hand, in the summer, a few little floaters to some, some fish just laying up on the top, just to try and encourage a few to take. It's perfect for that. Then you've got the midi. Absolutely perfect for medium to long range. They're really good for topping up your spot after you've had a bite. You know, when you just want to put like three or four out just to encourage the next bite, they're really great for that. Also, if you do a lot of boily fishing, like they fly absolutely miles. So, you know, a lot further than what you could throw and stick a bait. Um, so for putting boilies in, I would use this for boilie fishing over the big one, simply because, you know, you can, as you're spawning and hitting the clip, you can move the rod around um, step into the step into it a bit, get a decent spread for boily fishing, absolutely perfect. Uh, and also topping up the spots, like I said, which brings me on to the big one, which is what I use for uh, like windy conditions or when I'm payloading bait. So when I'm starting a session, like a lot of my fishing's done bait fishing. So if I want to put half, three quarters, or even a full bucket out to start with, I get this bad boy out and it gets that out there nice and quick, flies dead straight, nice and heavy, it's a clip down, and it's absolutely perfect for that. Tip number four is just to beat the bird life, really. Um, when you cast out, hit the clip, bomb goes down, just leave it there for 10 seconds or so, maybe give it a little twitch, just to ensure your bait comes out, but primarily it's to ensure that the goals don't get your bait. You know, they can be a bit of a mare on here at times, especially during the daylight hours, um, and they can really go for it uh, and attack your bait. So just leave it there. They don't like the spawn on the surface and they certainly don't like the braid. And this just ensures that all your bait comes out the spawn, gets down out the depth of the way of the goals, and, uh, and yeah, just make sure that they're not robbing your bait, basically. Tip 
tip five is the correct setup. And by that, I mean choosing the right rod for yourself to cater for what you need it for. And in the Spom range, we have four rods ranging from 10 foot to 13 foot from medium range to long range. So if you're using like say a 10 foot rod for your fishing, you can have a similar Spom rod to match that. So it matches your casting style and your technique uh, and also, you know, right up through. So if you're distance fishing, you can use, if you're using 13 foot fishing rods, you've got a nice powerful long range 13 foot spawn rod to uh, to go with that as well. On your spawn rod, you're gonna want a really decent reel. And by this, I mean, you know, a big pit version, um, something that when you chuck your spawn out, it's not gonna take like forever and a day to wind in. You know, you're gonna be using it a lot of the time. So you want something strong and reliable and that you can get the spawn in nice and quick to speed up that baiting process. Not only that, on this, I've got 20 pound spotter marker braid and this is a 20 pound version, but it's a low diameter braid. Um, it's not a fishing braid, it's an actual spotter marker braid. So it's nice, really thin. So when you cast out, it's effortless for the spawn to get out there nice and quick. If you're using like a thicker mono or a thicker braid, you're gonna have a lot more resistance going through the rings and you know, also like the spawn's gotta drag that line out there as well. So it's just definitely not the one for, you know, for spawning. You definitely want a thin, actually purposely made spotter marker braid. On this 20 pound version that I've got, I've actually got a 50 pound shock leader. That's because at times you can be casting a big weight and you're going to be casting it a lot. So you don't want it to wear out so you crack off or anything like that. You want a 50 pound version so it can withstand all of that. It can withstand big casts and the longevity of the casting, the amount that you're going to use it. And that's perfect for me. Lastly, equally as important is to get yourself a finger stool. I can't stress this enough, like using thin, strong braids um, could easily cut through your finger if you were to leave the clutch loose or something like that. So please make sure that you wear one of these, you get one of these. Um, I wear mine all the time. Not only does it protect your finger from, you know, from cutting it, it also helps put power through the cast because you don't feel the line on your finger so much. But uh, yeah, I wear mine all the time, like I said, and I couldn't imagine like, Imagine if you cut your finger and you couldn't cast the rod out and go fishing, it'd be a nightmare. So uh, yeah, make sure that you get these on. One last little thing, um, and it's just out of habit that I've done this over the years, is I just clip the spawn on the line. When it's lent up against the trees, it's not getting caught in the branches. It's not swinging around, banging the rod, driving me mad whilst I'm not using it. But I hope that you can take something from this and put it into your own fishing. If you've got any top tips that I haven't mentioned and you'd like to share with other people, then please drop them in the comments below and the best five will receive a, uh, a free spawn.